Good evening and welcome to this evening's content service from St John's in Egham. Today is Tuesday the 13th of April. My name is Simon Fraser and I'm one of the Associate Ministers of the Church. Before we start this service, shall we just spend a moment, a minute in silence to remember uh, His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. We now begin our service. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We now come to our time of confession together. And before we start the confession, shall we just spend a few moments thinking about the day that we've had? There'll be things that we can thank God for, but there may also be things that we might regret where we haven't been at our best. A few moments of silence now to reflect on the day now past, before we come to our time of confession together. We say our confession together. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins. Time for amendment of life and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We now come to our Compline hymn, which we say together. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. Amen. And we now continue our journey through Matthew's Gospel. And tonight we're looking at Matthew chapter 17, verses 14 to 23. When they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. You unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy and he was healed at that moment. 
Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, Why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, Because you have so little faith. Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. When they came together in Galilee, he said to them, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him. And on the third day, he will be raised to, to life. And the disciples were filled with grief. Amen. Now in, in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus has already told his disciples of his death at the hands of the authorities and also of his resurrection. Our reading this evening comes hot on the heels of the transfiguration witnessed only by Peter, James and John. We read that a man approaches Jesus and appeals to him about his son who was afflicted by seizures. The disciples had failed to be able to cure the boy and not all seizures were the result of demon possession but these seizures were. Now Jesus expresses some frustration aimed at his disciples. You unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Jesus knows that his time with his disciples is short. How will they cope when he is no longer with him? The boy is brought to Jesus and we read, Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy and he was healed at that moment. Now later the disciples spoke to Jesus, uh, to Jesus quietly. Why couldn't we drive it out? And Jesus tells them exactly why. Because you have so little faith. And he went on to say this. Truly I tell you, if you have, have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. The mustard seed being one of the smallest seeds, seeds measured up against the the idea of, of moving mountains gives us some idea of the potential of faith. For surely our God is the God of the impossible. We end our reading with Jesus reminding his disciples that he is going to be killed by those who oppose him. But the third day he will, be ra he will rise again. The disciples are filled with grief. I just want to raise this issue of faith and return to it. I must, confess, I must confess that I feel a little some sympathy for the disciples. I don't know about you, but I don't think my faith would ever amount to seeing mountains moved. Perhaps Jesus is using the contrast here between a tiny seed and a huge mountain. He is saying that locked up in that seed is amazing potential to do great things. And indeed, the disciples went on to do great things through the faith and the power of the Holy Spirit. Faith is about believing and trusting in an almighty and creator God. Who can do, who can and does the, the impossible. Our part is to learn and trust and believe, even when the odds and circumstances seem to say otherwise and are, are against us. And this leads us conveniently into our expressions of faith. We say these together. Lord, you've always given bread for the coming day. And though I am poor, today I believe. Lord, you've always given strength for the coming day. And though I am weak, today I believe. Lord, you've always given peace for the coming day. And though of anxious heart, today I believe. Lord, you've always kept me safe in trials and now tried as I am. Today, I believe. Lord, you've always marked the road for the coming day. And though it may be hidden, today, I believe. Lord, you've always lightened this darkness of mine. And though the night is here, today, I believe. And finally, Lord, you have always spoken when time is ripe. 
And though you be silent now, today I believe. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake me we watch with Christ, and to sleep may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. I like to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. And now we come to our time of prayer together. Shall we pray? Our Father God, we thank you for the life of Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, and how he has supported the Queen over so many years and faithfully served his country. And we pray for the Queen and all the royal family, that in their time of grief, that they may know your presence and your consolation at this time. And we also pray for all the families who have lost loved ones in recent times. Countless lives lost that will go unnoticed in the media, but are just as precious to those who love them. And now a moment to pause for our own private prayers as we think about those that we love and care for. Shall we pray for them? Amen to our private prayers. Uh, Father God, as we begin to move out of lockdown, we pray that the number of new infections won't rise out of control and drag us down again. Help us, we pray, to look out for each other and to be as careful as we can. Father God, we thank you that in times of trouble and uh, uh, trouble and struggle and hardship, that we can always turn to you. Increase our faith, Lord, even when things look bleak and hard. And Father, we thank you that you have gathered us, gathered us together as a church to be part of your global family, so that we can love and care and support each other. Help us, we pray, to love you, to love each other, and to love our community. Amen. And now let us pray for our daily bread as Jesus has taught us. We say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray. And drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our service is drawing to a close. In peace we will lie down and sleep. 
For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. I am placing my soul and my body in thy safekeeping this night, O God. In thy safekeeping, O Jesus Christ. In thy safekeeping, O Spirit of perfect truth. The three who would defend my cause be keeping me this night from harm. Amen. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you this night and in all the days ahead. Amen. And it remains for me now just to say good night and God bless.